All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, this part of the lesson, we're going to be looking at how to design and build your calendar with block scheduling in mind. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at the first six weeks in this particular training, and then hopefully that will help you to be able to design it for yourself in future six weeks, okay? Uh, so we're looking at how to build a, a block calendar and kind of your scope and sequence, really, when we're talking about being on block. And so we're going to talk about some things as far as marking out holidays and things like that. What you're going to want to do first is you're going to want to create a six-week uh, block of time, a six-week calendar. Kind of divide your weeks up. Notice I drew squiggly lines because I can't draw a straight line. If you do this on a computer, I was a little easier, but for the board today, I just kind of drew the squiggly lines. And that way I don't get fussed at for not being straight. So what I've done though is I've started the first day of school for us is going to be August 17th of next year. And so that's my first week. And notice how it's kind of wide right here. That's because I have my A day and my B day, um, which would really be periods one through eight, and they're included kind of all in that section. So when you make your calendar, it's gonna look a little weird, all right? So Monday and Tuesday is all one day, so it's gonna be one lesson topic, if you will, for those classes. And then Tuesday, or sorry, Wednesday, Thursday is all one lesson. And then notice I have Friday here, it's kind of small, and Monday, because they go together. And what I've done, everybody's kind of different, but my suggestion is I put the dates for the, what I call the A days. That's gonna be your first day of the block. And so I just put the dates for all my A days. Notice we have Labor Day here, September 7th, no school that day. And so this is kind of something that's interesting for block. We had Friday was an A day here on September 4th. Then we miss Monday. Well, it doesn't mean we miss an A day. Or I'm sorry, it doesn't mean we miss a B day. It just means that that Tuesday would be a B day instead of that Monday, okay? So this is kind of what the first six weeks would look like. We've got 17th, 19th, 21st, that first week. Uh, that's our social emotional learning for those of y'all that don't remember or maybe you're new. That first week is going to be kind of going through and getting to know the kids and kind of that kind of stuff. Uh, also because we're moving around classes, things like that. So you're going to want to design your calendar with the, the dates blocked out like that, something like that. And obviously you can use Excel, you can use whatever program you want to use. You can do it in Word uh, or you can do it on the board. I have this in my classroom all year long. Looks something similar to this so the kids can see it and see what their assignments and things like that are going to be, okay? So you're going to block out your calendars. You're, or sorry, you're going to mark out your holidays. You're going to put your days into pairs. So, like I said, 17, 18 together, 19, 20 together. You're going to label any known interruptions. All right, now, first six weeks, we don't actually have a lot. The first week, we're going to have the social emotional learning, um, but that's not really an interruption that's planned for. When I say interruptions, I'm thinking, I, and I don't mean interruptions in a bad way, but I mean like PSATs, pep rallies, things like that. Things that you know the kids aren't necessarily going to be active. If you know everybody is, let's say it's the SAT day for your school that day, or if they're star testing, that's you would want to block those out first before you plan anything else. And then you want to map out the six weeks, scope and sequence onto your calendar. And that's where the work is going to come. This is, this is where the hard part comes in. Okay. And you're going to want to make sure you include times for testing if needed, um, depending on if you have benchmarks or district tests or school associated tests that maybe your uh, administration is wanting you to do things like that. You want to make sure that's on there. And just remember one block equals two days worth of lessons. Okay. And so for our example for that today, we're looking at Algebra 1, uh, just kind of as an example. This does not have to be, obviously, if you're doing geometry, Algebra 2 would be different lessons, okay? Uh, and what I'm going to use to do that, I have a printed out, and you can always just pull up the computer. This is the district's 2021 calendar, and then I also have the scope and sequence. It's on the curriculum page so that I can see which lessons and how long they last and things like that. Um, so for Algebra 1, the first lesson after that first week is writing equations. And it's designed to be done in one day or a 45, 50 minute class period, okay? The second lesson is intro to solving equations, uh, two step equations, yeah? And so we're uh, supposed to have one day for each one of those. And so what we're gonna do since we're on block is we're actually able to do both of those in the same day, all right? Now, this is not the time where you stress about how do I do that? How do I, how do I teach both of those in the same day? For this particular part of this professional development, all we want you to do is to overlay the topics onto the calendar, okay? To kind of get an idea of what the pacing would be and what that looks like, okay? And there's gonna be some questions that you're gonna to have to kind of think about and think through and maybe even discuss with your uh, professional learning communities at your school. Things like that first week is social emotional learning. We'll notice that that Friday and Monday kind of go together. This Monday generally is where we would start new instruction, but that's on a B day. Are you okay starting your new instruction on a B day? And if you are, then maybe you're going to do BA, BA. And that's okay. That's another freedom thing we have with block scheduling is it doesn't really matter if your fifth period does stuff before your first period, okay? 
A and B is strictly to let you know which one goes with which. It doesn't necessarily have to be which one's one's ahead of the other, okay? So maybe you decide you want to start on that Monday. So for you, your fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth period is going to do their lessons prior to your first, second, third, and fourth. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And so maybe you set your calendar up that way. But that's a personal choice you're going to need to make. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you some time. Um, there should be a link here in the development. There's going to be a link to your, the scope and sequences. There's going to be a link to a 2021 calendar, okay? And then we're either going to have a link for a blank calendar for you to fill out, or you can do it on paper if you'd like. Uh, but we are going to ask you to upload that as far as a finished work so we can see that you've done that, all right? I have found that planning a six weeks at a time, or at least mapping out your lessons a six weeks at a time, will make you much more efficient when it comes to covering all the material, okay? And making sure you don't get too far behind, all right? Um, okay, so, and again, Good luck, and if you have any questions, hopefully they'll get answered. Thank you.